I've had a lot of people leave comments saying that temperature gun accuracy can be a huge problem. So the question is, is this $8 temperature gun just as good as this one which cost $245? Well, let's find out. At a price of only $8, the least expensive temperature gun we'll be testing is made by Sun Koda. It's supposed to have a temperature range of minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 932 degrees Fahrenheit. The accuracy is supposed to be plus or minus 1.5%. It's supposed to have a distance spot ratio of 12.1. If a temperature gun has a distance to spot ratio of 12.1, it means that for every 12 inches of distance, the temperature gun measures a one inch circle. It's very much like a flashlight. The farther you move away, the larger the cone becomes. The larger the ratio, the more desirable. And the Sun Koda is made in China. Weight is sometimes an indicator of quality, and the Sun Koda weighs 120.52 grams. To test the accuracy of the infrared thermometers, I purchased a contact thermometer that comes with a certificate of calibration. And the test equipment has been tested and certified as accurate to within one tenth of one degree. The tip of the temperature probe has been touching the concrete floor for about five minutes and the temperature is stabilized at 69.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Sun Koda is measuring 71.1 degrees with an error of 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit too high. At a price of $9, is this NJTY T600? That's a lot to say, so let's just call this the T600. They claim a temperature range from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,112. 12 second auto off to prolong the battery life. And the T600 is made in China. And the T600 weighs 123.68 grams. For a budget thermometer, the T600 did a great job at 69.6 degrees or an error rate of only 0.2 degrees too high. At a price of $17, is this Thermopro brand? It's supposed to have an accuracy of plus or minus 1.5%. They claim it has a 500 millisecond response time. It can be set up to measure the minimum, maximum, or average temperature. Most of the affordable temperature guns are set up to measure at 0.95 emissivity. The problem with an emissivity of 0.95 is it just will not provide an accurate measurement on shiny or smooth objects. All the thermometers are set up for 0.95 emissivity for measuring the temperature of concrete. And the Thermopro is made in China. And the Thermopro is just under 142 grams. And the Thermopro is way off at 64.9 degrees or 4.5 degrees too low. At a price of $19, is this Savarkati brand? The temperature range is from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,112. Accuracy is plus or minus 2%. It has a 12 to 1 distance spot ratio. The response time is supposed to be 500 milliseconds. And the Savarkati is made in China. And it's 158.46 grams for the Savarkati. And the Savarkati is at 68.4 degrees or 1 degree off target. At a price of $19, is this Kaizen brand? It has a spot ratio of 12 to 1. The temperature range is from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,112. The nice thing is you can adjust the emissivity on the Kaizen. It has an adjustable emissivity range from 0.1 to 1. And the Kaizen is made in China. The Kaizen weighs 146.67 grams. And the Kaizen is pretty close to the target temperature at 69.8 degrees. At a price of $30, is this FKM brand? It even includes a pretty nice carrying case. It has a temperature range from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,112. Unlike other single point thermometers, this one is designed with a 12 point laser to measure the temperature with higher accuracy. The emissivity is adjustable from 0.1 to 1.0. And the FKM is made in China. And the FKM is just under 202 grams. The FKM missed the target by 1.6 degrees or 71 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $36, is this Mestec brand? It includes a pretty nice carrying case. It has by far the broadest temperature range yet at minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,472. The response time is less than one half of a second. The spot ratio is 12 to 1. And the Mestec is made in China. And it's 155.71 grams for the Mestec. And the Mestic had an even bigger miss at 71.2 degrees or 1.8 degree error. At a price of $38, is this Vivor brand? It has by far the broadest temperature range from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,732. They claim the thermometer has a dual laser configuration. Emissivity is adjustable from 0.1 to 1.0. A 50 to 1 distance to spot ratio is by far the best yet. It automatically powers down after 35 seconds. And the Viver is made in China. And the Viver is by far the heaviest yet at 312.7 grams. And the Viver moves into the lead over the T600 at 69.3 degrees, which is 0.1 degrees too low. At a price of $48, is this Surpeer brand? The temperature range is from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,552. It has a spot ratio of 30 to 1. They claim accuracy within plus or minus 2%. They do mention that low battery levels can lead to inaccurate measurements. And a Surpeer is made in China. And a Surpeer weighs 194.79 grams. And a Surpeer is also pretty close to target at 69.1 degrees Fahrenheit. 
At a price of $50 is this Ames brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. It includes a pretty nice carrying case. It has a distance to spot ratio of 20 to 1. It has a large 2.1 inch color screen. It does have adjustable emissivity. The temperature range is from minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,102. It's supposed to have an accuracy within plus or minus 2%. And the Ames is made in China. And it's 310.11 grams for the Ames. And the Harbor Freight Ames is also very close at 69.2 degrees. At a price of $63 is this AO Putt River brand. I have no idea how they come up with names for these products. That's quite a mouthful to say, so let's just call this the Putt River. They claim a temperature range of minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,876. The distance to spot ratio is 30 to 1. It even includes a flashlight. And the Putt River is made in China. And the Putt River weighs 308.3 grams. And the Putt River is measuring 1.3 degrees too low at 68.1. We'll be testing two different temperature guns made by Klein Tools. The first one costs $65. Includes a carrying pouch. It has a distance to spot ratio of 12 to 1. The temperature ranges from minus 22 to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. It offers dual laser targeting. And the Klein Tools is made in China. And is 282.46 grams for the Klein Tools. Klein Tools IR5 had a pretty big miss at 72.7 degrees or 3.3 degrees too high. At a price of $86 is this Milwaukee brand. It has a distance to spot ratio of only 10 to 1. They claim that it has the clearest screen and faster scanning. The temperature ranges from minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 752. Unfortunately, the emissivity cannot be adjusted. It's set to 0.95. Just like the other brands, the Milwaukee is made in China. The Milwaukee weighs 291.18 grams. And the Milwaukee is at 68.7 degrees or missed the target by 0.7 degrees. And the second client tool's temperature gun will be testing cost $104. It also comes with a carrying pouch. The previous one had a distance to spot ratio of 12 to 1. This one is 20 to 1. The temperature range is minus 40 degrees to 1200. The emissivity can be adjusted from 0.1 to 1.0. Enhanced durability, it can take a drop from almost 10 feet. And Klein Tools is made in China. And Klein Tools weighs 254.29 grams. And Klein Tools IR10 is at 71.7 or an error of 2.3 degrees. At a price of $245, the most expensive temperature gun we'll be testing is made by Fluke. And the distance to spot ratio is 12 to 1. Wide temperature range up to 1,022 degrees Fahrenheit. You can only choose between low and high for the emissivity setting. And the Fluke is made in China. And the Fluke weighs 332.2 grams. And the Fluke overshot the target temperature at 70.1 degrees or 0.7 degrees too high. So the Viver came out on top with an error of only 0.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The T600 and the Harbor Freight Ames tied for second place with an error of only 0.2 degrees. Let's test the hot temperature accuracy of the thermometers. The steel plates have been on the hot plate for around four hours and the temperature is very stable. I'll apply some thermal paste to the probe and I'll insert the probe into a hole that's been drilled into the steel plate. And the steel plate is right at 386 degrees Fahrenheit. I did some testing and the factory emissivity setting at 0.95 is the best for the test. And the soon coda is at 373.3 degrees or below the target temperature by 12.7 degrees. And the T600 once again performed very well and is only off by 1.5 degrees. Very impressive. And the Thermo Pro is off by even more than the soon coda at 371.7 degrees or 14.3 degrees off target. The Zovercotti is off by 5 degrees at 381 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Kaizen has the largest error yet, missing the target by a temperature of 24 degrees. The FKM also had a pretty substantial temperature error of 20.5 degrees at 365.5. The Mestic is a little closer to the 386 degree target by 13.8 degrees, which is a pretty big miss. And the Viva also struggled on this test at 364 degrees or a 22 degree error. And the Supera measured 380.1 degrees or 5.9 degrees too low. And the Ames measured 376.5 degrees, which is a 9.5 degree error. And the Putt River is off by just over one degree to move into the lead at 384.8 degrees. And the Klein Tools IR5 is also very close to the target temperature at 384.4 degrees. And the Milwaukee is 7.5 degrees too low at 378.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The Klein Tools IR10 is almost 10 degrees below the target temperature at 376.3. And the Fluke once again performed quite a bit better than average, missing the target by 3 degrees. So the Pine River came out on top, only missing the target temperature by 1.2 degrees. The T600 finished in second place at 1.5, and Klein Tools IR5, 1.6 degrees off target. To test the thermometers for cold temperature accuracy, I purchased a thermometer that comes with a certificate of calibration. The temperature inside the freezer is right at minus 16 degrees Fahrenheit, which works out to minus 27 degrees Celsius.
The two pieces of steel have been in the freezer for 12 hours, and the very affordable Sunkota is off by just under 10 degrees at minus 6.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The T600 is off by 11.3 degrees at minus 4.7, and the Thermapro really likes the cold and was nearly perfect at minus 16.4 degrees. And the Silver Cotty shows minus 8.7 degrees, which works out to a 7.3 degree temperature error. The Kaizen missed the target temperature by 9.5 degrees at minus 6.5, and the FKM performed quite a bit better than average at minus 12.4, missing the target temperature by 3.6. And domestic is showing 282 degrees. I made quite a few attempts and even attempted to adjust the settings without any success. So the domestic is not ideally suited to measure cold temperatures. And Aviva performed a little bit better than average once again at minus 9.3 or an error of 6.7 degrees. The Superior missed the target temperature by just 10 degrees at minus 6.3. And the Harbor Freight Ames also performed better than average at minus 10.3 degrees or 5.7 degrees off target. And the Pearl River measured minus 9.4 degrees, which works out to a 6.6 .6 degree error. And the Klein Tools IR5 continues to struggle at minus 6 degrees or 10 degrees off the target temperature. The Milwaukee moves into second place behind the Thermapro at minus 14.1 degrees. The Klein Tools IR10 also struggled with the cold temperature, missing the target temperature by 11.5 degrees. And the fluke continues to impress at minus 13.4 degrees to move into third place behind the Milwaukee. So the Thermapro finished in first place, missing the target temperature by only 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Milwaukee finished in second place, missing the target by 1.9 degrees. And fluke finished in third, missing the target temperature by only 2.6 degrees. Objects that have a glossy or smooth and shiny finish can be very challenging for infrared thermometers to accurately measure temperature. I've already experimented with the emissivity settings, and the 0.95 setting is still the best setting for this test. The steel plate is starting off at 68. 8.9 degrees. And assume Coda's emissivity setting cannot be adjusted and it's 11.7 degrees too high. The T600 performed a lot better than the Sunkota and it's off by 4.3 degrees. I made several attempts to adjust the emissivity setting on a Thermapro and the original 0.95 emissivity setting proved to be the best. The Thermapro is off by 4.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Just like with the Thermapro, I made several attempts to dial in the emissivity with the Silver Cotty. Unfortunately, the other settings made the accuracy worse than the 0.95 setting. The best emissivity setting for the Savakati is 0.95 and it's off by 5.2 degrees. And the Kaizen is the most accurate yet at 72.8 degrees or 3.8 degrees off target. And the FKM is at 75.3 degrees or 6.3 degrees off the mark. The Mestic performed about the same as the FKM at 75.4 degrees. And the Viva is the closest yet at 72 or just 3 degrees off the target. And the Superior is off the target temperature by just over 9 degrees Fahrenheit. I tried several emissivity settings with the Ames, and 0.8 worked out to be the best at 77.9 degrees. That's still just about a 9 degree error. And the Pug River moves into first place over the Viva at 71.7 degrees. Unfortunately, the Klein Tools IR5 continues to struggle at 81.1 or 12.1 degrees off the target. And the Milwaukee performs better than average at 74 degrees or 5 degrees above the target. And the Klein Tools IR10 is about 8.5 degrees off the mark at 77.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Fluke once again performs very well at 71.4 degrees or just 2.4 degrees off the target to move into the lead. So the fluke finished in first place with an error of only 2.4 degrees. If you're taking back-to-back -back measurements, tool speed might be a factor to consider. And the Sunkota is pretty slow at 2.46 seconds. The T600 is more than twice as fast at 1.17 seconds. And the Thermo Pro is pretty slow at 1.95. And the Silver Cardi is just as fast as the T600 at 1.17 seconds. And the Kaizen is pretty slow at 1.89. And the FKM is pretty fast at 1.17 seconds. And the Mastic is the fastest yet at 1.12. And the Viva is very fast at 0.7 seconds. And the Surpeer is very slow at 3.44 seconds. And it's 1.63 seconds for the Ames. The Putt River is pretty slow at 1.79. The Klein Tools IR5 is the fastest yet at 0.6 seconds. The Milwaukee is a little faster than average at 1.27. And the Klein Tools is by far the fastest yet at 0.2 seconds. And the Fluke finished in second place at 0 0.3. And the Klein Tools IR10 is the fastest at 0 0.2 seconds. Fluke finished in second place at 0 0.3 seconds and Klein Tools IR5 0 0.6 seconds. Let's see how the infrared thermometers perform on polished aluminum wheels that are right at 71.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Sunkota measured a little bit too high at 73.9 degrees. The T600 again performed well at 72, which is only 0 0.7 degrees off the target temperature. The Thermo Pro is 3.8 degrees below the target temperature at 67. 7.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Silver Cotty moves into first place over the T600 at 71.8. And the Kaizen is only off by 0 0.1 degrees at 71.4. The FKM is once again over the target temperature at 73.4 degrees. 
The Mastic is off by more than 3 degrees at 74.5, and Aviva once again performed well at 71.8 or only one half degree off target. And the Superior also performed well once again and is only off by 0.2 degrees. The Harbor Freight Ames is 2.1 degrees too high at 73.4. And the Putt River is 0.8 degrees too low at 70.5. And the Klein Tools IR5 is off by 4.6 degrees at 75.9 degrees Fahrenheit. The Milwaukee is also off target by 75.2 degrees or 3.9 degrees too high. And the Klein Tools IR10 is only off by 1.3 degrees at 72.6. And the Fluke once again performed very well missing the target temperature by 0.1 degrees. So the Kaizen and the Fluke finished in a two-way tie for first place with an error of only 0.1 degrees. The Superior also performed well with an error of 0.2 degrees. The visibility of some of the displays can be very challenging in direct sunlight, but the Sunkota is pretty easy to see. Just like the Sunkota, the T600 is pretty easy to read in direct sunlight. And the Thermo Pro is also pretty easy to read. Unfortunately, I just can't see the display on the Silver Cotty. And the Kaizen is definitely the best yet. It is very clear to see in direct sunlight. And the FKM is unreadable in direct sunlight, and so far it's the the most difficult to see. The Mestic is also nearly impossible to read. Unfortunately, the Viva is just as difficult to read as the FKM. For just the thermometers with the dark displays, the Surpeer is definitely the best so far. Unfortunately, the Harbor Freight Ames is very challenging to see. And the Putt River is also very difficult to read. And the Klein Tools is a lot friendlier on the eyes than the displays with a dark screen. And the Milwaukee isn't as easy to see as the Klein Tools. The Klein Tools IR10 is pretty easy to read. And the Fluke is very easy to see in direct sunlight. Assessing the displays for visibility in direct sunlight is highly subjective, but the Kaizen and the Fluke came out on top with the best possible rating of 1. Several of the other brands earned a rating of 2. The screens with the dark displays are definitely the most challenging to see in direct sunlight. If one adds up the temperature errors for all five tests, the Fluke had a cumulative error of 8.8 .8 degrees. The Putt River finished in second place at 12.6 and the T600 18 degrees. So which infrared thermometer is best? The left side of the scorecard provides some basic information about the thermometers. On the right side of the scorecard, I've converted raw score into average finisher ranking. And the Fluke came out on top with an average finish of 2.5. The Fluke performed consistently well in all categories. However, it is a very expensive thermometer at around $245. The biggest limitation to the Fluke is the distance to spot ratio. With a distance to spot ratio of only 12.1 to 30 the thermometer needs to be pretty close to small areas that you're trying to measure. The Viva and the T600 finished in a two-way tie for second place with an average finish of 5.3. And the Viva performed well in most categories but really struggled with the temperature measurement of the hot metal. With a 50 to 1 distance to spot ratio, it is able to measure the temperature of a small area just over four times the distance compared to the Fluke and the T600. Finally, for a very affordable price of $9, I really like the T600 and that would definitely be my choice. It performed well in all categories except for measuring the temperature of the cold steel. If one removes that variable, the T600 performed nearly as well as the Putt River and the Fluke. The biggest downside to the T600 is that it does not offer adjustable emissivity. However, from my testing, adjusting the emissivity settings really didn't help too much. Putting together reviews like this one take a lot of time, effort, and expense. So I really want to thank everyone that supports the channel because it makes a huge difference. Also, all the videos in this channel are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.